Hello friends, in today's video, we're going to be exploring two ways that we can actually utilize inside our .NET Web API to enhance performance. I'm Muhammad, and I help you learn .NET and the cloud. Please make sure you subscribe and like this video. Now, let's get started. So what I have here is I have an empty web application. It barely has anything in it. It's just basically the out-of-the-box template that .NET provides. And it has one single controller, and this controller basically gives me the weather. So the first item that we want to actually go through today, which is going to be response caching. So response caching caching is basically allow us to cache the response from a single API endpoint. So that way, if we're returning the same information over and over again, we don't really have to always query the database to get the information back. We can cache this information inside our API for a certain amount of time, so it will be directly given back to anyone who is, is requesting it. So it makes it much more easier for us from a performance point of view. So let's see how we can implement this inside my application. So now, before we do anything, I'm just going to run my application. Now, as you can see here, I have a single endpoint. If I click on try it out and execute we can see i got different weathers so every time i click it i get different temperatures which is fine so now what i want to do is i want to implement output caching and once i do that we can see that this information here will stay the same for a certain amount of time and then it will refresh because it's going to be cached right now every time every single time it's getting random ones but with caching it's going to be the same one for a certain amount of time. So let's go back to Rider and start implementing it. So if we stop my application here, first thing that I want to do is I want to enable response caching. So I'm going to put app dot use response caching. And basically this is all I need to do inside my program.cs. Basically what I'm doing here is I'm including the middleware for caching to be included inside my application startup. So that way whenever my .NET application is starting up, it will check if it has any response caching enabled. And if so, it will actually load it into the pipelines. So now that's the first step. The second step here is within my controller. What I need to do is on the top of the action itself, I put response cache. And then here I specify the actual amount of caching that I want. And here basically what I need to do is I need to specify it in seconds and I can put duration and then I can put it here, let's say for 60 seconds. So what I basically did here is I basically, I told my .NET Web API that this action itself is going to have a response cache for 60 seconds. So it's going to store the same information for 60 seconds. So now if we run our application again and we go to our web browser and now we can see if I click on execute we got this information here which is going to be let's uh, take a look at this one 13 and 55 so usually if I click execute again we're going to get a different response but now we can see I'm still getting the same response over and over again because this has been cached for 60 seconds so now after 60 seconds has been gone I should be able to get another set of information 60 seconds is a long time to wait for demoing this so I'm going to stop the video and after 60 seconds we're going to be seeing it updated so now we can see after 60 seconds it has changed to minus 3 and 27 and now this information is cached again for 60 seconds so this is how easy it is to actually add performance to our application by simply adding two lines of code into our web api in order for us to actually enable caching response caching in specific okay great so now that we have done that the second tip for the day which is going to be how to utilize in memory caching so right now we have seen that we can actually cache a full api response uh, sorry a full endpoint response now we want to see how we can actually cache a single part of my action so for example let's say i'm doing an a api call for a database i'm getting i'm doing a few api calls and i have a few sets of data that i'm returning so let's say for a single set of data i don't really need to keep calling it every single time i just need only some of them so if i want to implement the response caching on this it will not really be helpful because i only want a certain set of data that i need to be cached not everything so now let's see how we can actually implement this so now if you go to our program.cs and here what i need to do is before the app dot build builder dot build and here before the builder dot build i need to put builder dot services dot add memory cache so this is the first one here basically what i'm doing here i'm telling my dot net application that it needs to actually start utilizing the in memory caching in order for it to work so that's the first thing next i need to go to my weather forecast controller and i need to inject my memory so what i need to do here i put private read only i memory cache i'll call it memory and i can inject this into my constructor in order for me to initialize it and now i can actually start utilizing inside my action so here for example what i have is i am getting this set of information back so what i can do is i can put var result equal and then i can put the return result and for example just to make this a bit interesting i'm gonna have two results one is gonna be cached one is gonna be not and i'm gonna return here a new object which is gonna contain the result and the result too and this is gonna be changed to i action result actually i can do it like this return okay and now basically i'm able to return this so now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna run this and now we should be able to get two sets of results so now if we go to the web browser and then execute we can see here i got two list of results so i have result and i have result two so now what i want to do is 
is actually I want to cache result one and basically keep result being updated. So let's see how we can do that. So I'm going to stop my application here. And first of all, I want to define my cache key. And this is going to allow me in, in case I'm caching a lot of stuff. This is going to be its own unique key that I can actually refer to. I'm going to const. I'm going to create a variable const string i'm gonna say cache key equal water result so that's the first item and then what i need to do i'm gonna say if not underscore memory dot try get value i'm gonna specify here the key and i'm gonna say the out of this it's gonna be the i enumerable weather forecast i'm gonna call it forecast forecast and this should not be here and this needs to be here okay perfect so what i'm doing here and basically i'm checking if inside my cache memory do i have a cache key that contain any value if not i'm going in and i'm actually adding this information so now all i'm gonna do i'm just gonna copy this and put it inside here and now once i have done this now i want to specify my cache configuration so i can put var cache options equal new memory cache entry options and then from this i can specify the following so the first one is going to be absolutely absolute expiration relative to now so i'm gonna say here this is gonna be a time span from minutes and it's gonna be from one minute so in case so in case after one minute nothing have changed it will basically expire the other one which is gonna be the sliding expiration i'm gonna say if for example every 30 seconds there's gonna be a utilization expand the one minute expiry date by 30 seconds so again time span from seconds to 30 seconds so every 30 seconds it can actually expire so it basically we're sliding the expiration by 30 seconds as long as I'm using it. So now that we have done this, the last thing that I need to do is I need to set this memory or basically set the cache. So memory dot set. I'm going to specify the cache key that I have. I'm going to specify the value that I have and I'm going to specify the cache options that I have. So now that I have done this, now I have in all of this information available for me inside my cache. So now in order for me to actually return this result that I need here, what I can do is I can change this from result to forecast because this is what I'm going to be utilizing. So I can put this information here and now basically Basically, I need to update this and now I need to update this and now basically I have access to my forecast. So what I have done here, just a quick recap, I defined my cache key. Then what I'm doing is I'm checking if there is any information inside my cache the, for this key specifically. If there is and it's not expired, I use it. If there isn't or it's expired, I go and I get no information. Then I'm setting up my caching option. And here I'm saying that's going to be, gonna be cached for a single minute with a sliding expire of 30 seconds. And once that is done, what I'm doing is I'm setting again the cache option for me. So now if I run my application and if we go to my web browser and now let's see this. So execute, we can see for the first time. It has the same, it's random. So we can see, let's say it's 42 and 107. And here we have 46 and 114. So if I execute again, this is state as 42 and 107, where the other one has changed to 46 and 114. Again, execute. Oh, we have implemented the caching on this. So that's why it might not work. So let me stop this and let me disable the response cache. And let's try this again. And let's go to my web browser. And here, all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna click on execute. We can see I got 42 and 107 in this case. And if I scroll down, 46 and 114. So let's click on execute again. So now we can see I have 33 and 91. And here I have minus 19 and, and minus 2. So if I click on execute, as you can see here, result 2 is now changed from minus to 42 and 107. But the main one stayed the same, 33 and 91. And this is how we can see that one of the responses has been cached, the other one isn't. So if I click on execute again, now we can see that this is still 33 and 91. And now this one changed to 30 and 85 again one more time we can see here that it's 18 and 64 now but this one stayed with 33 and 91 so as we can see from the code here it's actually pretty simple to introduce caching and actually introducing it to certain part of our applications and having these types of enhancements only require us a small amount of investment and time in order for us to introduce them basically it takes us like 10 minutes to 15 minutes to do so but the performance output is going to be really really big and it's going to be really have a really big effect on our users and of, or anyone or anyone who's actually consuming our api I hope you liked this video. If you have any questions, please make sure you put them in the comments down below. If you'd like to support me, please make sure you support me on Patreon or buy me a coffee. With that said, thank you very much for watching and have a great day.